Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 552, Carbon Dioxide Transport. What are the three different forms that carbon dioxide is transported from the tissue to the lungs? Carbon dioxide is transported from tissues to lungs as bicarbonate, which happens in 90% of the cases. Carbon dioxide can also be transported as carb amino hemoglobin, which happens in 5% of the cases. And in this, carbon dioxide is bound to hemoglobin at the end terminus of the globin chain, not heme. And in this way, after the oxygen unloading has occurred, the taut form of hemoglobin will bind the carbon dioxide and transport it to the lung. And the third form in how carbon dioxide is transported from the tissue to the lung is as dissolved carbon dioxide, which also happens in 5% of the cases. So to summarize all this, it's transported as either bicarbonate, as carb amino hemoglobin, or as dissolved carbon dioxide. What does the Haldane effect describe? Haldane effect describes how carbon dioxide is released from the red blood cells. Now let me explain how this happens. Now as we already know, oxygen has to bind to hemoglobin and then it gets transported to tissues. But when oxygen binds to hemoglobin, there is dissociation of hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions that were released from hemoglobin will now bind to bicarbonate that's in the red blood cell. And this combination will form carbonic acid. Then this carbonic acid with the help of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase turn into carbon dioxide and water. This carbon dioxide and water is now freely able to cross a cross cell membrane. So basically the effect of all of this was that when originally the oxygen bound to hemoglobin is what got that hydrogen release and that hydrogen release eventually caused formation of carbon dioxide and water to freely cross a cross cell membrane and eventually make it all the way up to the alveoli and then finally exhaled. So to summarize the Haldane effect once again, when oxygenation of hemoglobin occurs, there is dissociation of hydrogen from hemoglobin. This will get the carbon dioxide formation process started and eventually this carbon dioxide is going to be released from the red blood cells and eventually exhaled. What is the Bohr effect? Bohr effect is something that goes on in the peripheral tissue. In this, when the tissue is requiring more oxygen, there is going to be high amount of carbon dioxide and hydrogen in this area, signaling that it requires more oxygen. Because of the signaling, hemoglobin is going to come through with the oxygen and unload the oxygen for it to be uptaken by the tissue. And that's basically what Bohr effect is. So remember, the Haldane effect is to get carbon dioxide out to the environment, whereas the Bohr effect is to get oxygen into the tissue. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.